year ago, I walked into an elementary school classroom and I felt a mixture of fear and helplessness. This classroom serves students who've been identified as having severe and profound physical and cognitive disabilities. Now, normally, I know exactly what to do uh, around kids in school because I've worked for most of my life in education and a good part of that at the K-12 level. However, with this population, I felt unsure of myself. Most of uh, the uh, special education teachers that I've met, they seem to have an unlimited supply of patience, creativity, and love. I was in that classroom because I was on a scouting trip because in a few days, I was going to show up with 10 high school students, and we were about to start on an ambitious project. We were going to design, uh, build, and deliver assistive technology devices for these same elementary school students to be able to interact with computers easier. Now, when I envisioned this project, my thinking was, this is going to be an amazing opportunity. When I was scouting uh, there in the classroom, I was thinking, I'm in way over my head. And uh, so a moment ago, I mentioned assistive technology devices. And I borrowed one here from uh, a special education teacher. And <clears throat> this device uh, basically allows students with special education needs to interact with computers e more, more easily. Uh, this young man is named Amp. And he's a bright young man who has been uh, diagnosed with cerebral palsy. Uh, what that means is, is that uh, his fine motor skills have uh, deteriorated some, and it, it's hard for him to use a normal keyboard and a mouse. Uh, and so devices like this make it easier for AMP to interact with a computer. This is basically an on-off switch that costs anywhere from $50 to $150. Now, uh, this is a plastic laundry basket belonging to one of the special education teachers I met with. And in it, it's filled with assistive technology devices that she says are expensive and oftentimes break. And when they break, it causes uh, um, unneeded stress in an already stressful job. And like her peers around the country, she spends hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars buying and sometimes replacing these devices. So what if there was a way to provide special education teachers and the students they work with with custom-built assistive technology devices that mirror or in some cases even outperform the store-bought versions and do it for far less? Hold that thought. This is my friend Joe, and last year he was teaching computer science at a local high school. And one day Joe and I were uh, visiting at lunch, and Joe was telling me about his computer science class. And that's when I suggested to him that he get his students out of the classroom and into the community to find real people with real problems that they could solve using their computer science skills. Joe loved the idea and asked if I would volunteer to lead a project, and I agreed. So, my very first class with his students, we went back to that elementary school that I, mom I mentioned a moment ago where I was scouting. We got to meet with the principal and ask him questions. And then we also met with the uh, students, uh, the special education students and the special education teachers. We got to see how these students were currently using the assistive technology devices to interact with the computers. Now, on the bus ride back to the high school, some of the students started sharing their concerns with me because they said uh, they weren't clear on how we were going to return in just three weeks and deliver custom-made assistive technology devices to these students. And even Joe pulled me aside and he said, Tom, are you sure that we're going to be able to pull this off? And of course I said, yes, we're going to be able to do this. But in reality, I, I didn't know because I had never done this before. Um, and, and so uh, I, I, there was one thing that I didn't tell them. I had a secret device, a device that would uh, make this whole project even possible. And that device is called a Makey Makey. It's a $50 gadget that plugs into your computer with a USB cord and I have a little video here to show you how this thing works. 
And this is a piano program. So what you're seeing is I alligator clip any conductive object to the makey makey and you've essentially created a switch that the computer recognizes as a keystroke. Now, depending on where you attach the other end of that alligator clip to the makey makey, you control what kind of keystroke you send to the computer. Do you want to control the space bar? No problem. The arrow keys, easy. Actually, any key on the keyboard can be controlled through this device. So when I introduced this device to the high school students, they quickly got the hang of it. And before long, they were designing game controllers that, uh, with the elementary school students in mind. Uh, the students worked in teams of two, and we started building prototypes of these game controllers out of cardboard, aluminum pie pans, duct tape. Uh, we built um, uh, um, some of our, our prototypes used uh, uh, metal scrubber pads and foam and even Play-Doh. And when it came time to uh, test and refine our prototypes, we all chipped in and, and gave each other help and feedback. Then, three weeks later, we got back in the, uh, in the high school bus to drive back to the elementary school, and here was the question. Could a group of high school students with no previous experience working with kids who have severe and profound physical and cognitive disabilities and no previous experience with human-centered design, could they deliver assistive technology devices that worked as intended? The short answer is yes. It was a huge success. The students loved using these homemade devices. Here's uh, uh, two of the students, two of the high school students developed a, a game controller that required collaborative play. And here you see two students playing the same game. And they're, as they work through the game, they must work together to solve problems uh, collaboratively. One of the special education teachers pulled me aside and said, this is, this is great because many of my students have difficulty collaborating, so she would love seeing her students engaged in this way. Look carefully in this photo and you'll see a student who's playing a game that requires the left and right arrow keys to be played. Only he's playing them, the arrow keys, there's a red one and there's a yellow one, that are, these keys are made out of Play-Doh. And as he touches the Play-Doh, it causes the, the game to, uh, be, he can play the game. So, uh, the neat thing is, is that the keys of this, this Play-Doh, they're conductive, just like a uh, Play-Doh is conductive, excuse me, just like an aluminum pie pan. I have a short video here uh, to show you two of the uh, games in action with the students. This is Amp, who you met earlier, playing with the Play-Doh, the game controller. This student is playing a giant piano, and the piano is made out of a $6 tarp from Home Depot, and the keys to that piano are made with aluminum foil tape. Uh, the tarp is connected to the Makey Makey, the Makey Makey is connected to the computer. One of the high school students told me that uh, this project provided the most profound learning experience of his entire four years in high school. One of the special education teachers pulled me aside and said, uh, this project, she, what she loved about this is high school students coming into her class and working so closely with her students. And she encouraged me to uh, do whatever I could to get the word out about this project. So, uh, so wouldn't it be amazing if more students around the country got an opportunity to do just this, to design solutions for their peers who are in need? And so to that end, I have uh, I'm started working on a curriculum along with some colleagues, and we're um, hoping that this curriculum will help teachers be able to experience some of the success that we had in our program. So what this story is really about to me is, well, yes, this, the technology is cool, and, and teaching students at this age uh, human-centered design, that is also cool. But what, what this really meant to me was, uh, it, didn't, it really didn't occur to me until I went on a walk with a friend of mine. And he said, uh, I was telling him about the project, and he stopped me and turned to me and said, at what point 
in your life did you discover the world needs you? He said that was the magic of this project. These students got a glimpse of what it feels like when you discover the world needs you. I'd like to end with a quote from one of my heroes in the field of education. This is Kurt Hahn, who is the founder of Outward Bound, and he says, there are three ways of trying to win the young. There is persuasion, there is compulsion, and there is attraction. You can preach at them, he said, but that is the hook without the worm. You can tell them you must volunteer, or you can tell them that you are needed. Thank you.